Did you know your gut and your liver are connected? Your liver enzymes can be affected by poor gut health. So we're going to talk about how, why, and what you can do to improve that connection today. I'm Dr. Shelley Meyer, I'm a registered dietitian, I'm a functional medicine doctor, and I'm a family doctor. And welcome to my channel. On this channel, my mission is to help you improve your gut health, to help you feel better, have more energy, clearer skin, not have pain in your gut, and have a better sense of what a healthy gut feels like, and to rec reclaim that gut health and reclaim the magic of feeling well. So help me share that mission. If you're new to this channel, welcome. Help me share the mission by liking, subscribing, and hitting the bell to be notified when I post a new video every Friday, and then sharing this video out if you know anybody that needs improved gut health in their life. And that is what we're here to talk about. So today, let's focus on the liver and the liver enzymes. And by that, I mean alkaline phosphatase, ALT, AST, even your bilirubin enzymes, which are related to the gallbladder, can be related to the liver. So these are things we want to improve if they're abnormal. And we, I can show you how today through that connection with the gut. Now, last week I talked about the gut-brain access, so I'll post a link up there above for you to check that out because that's con those two systems are connected as well. But the liver is very healthy for, I mean, very important for detoxification. So we need our liver to be working well in order to process you know, toxins that we come into, into contact with in our everyday lives. Also with medications, we need to process the medication, supplements, um, and just various, and our food, help process our food as well. Our digestion starts with the, the intestine doing that, but then through the venous circulation, through the portal circulation, then our liver is exposed to what our gut is processing. So if we have imbalanced gut bacteria, toxins being produced from imbalanced bacteria in our gut, then our liver is getting exposed to that. And when our liver is getting exposed to that, it can be overwhelmed, not be able to detoxify all of the many things that are do all the things that it needs to do. And that can lead to problems. We can lead to more inflammation in the liver and an immune reaction, meaning the liver is stimulating the immune system. So worsening of autoimmune disease and worsening of all those markers throughout our body that our body responds to as kind of a, you know, a normal reactive way, but this is being putting it on alert just because our gut is unhealthy. Now, there's other ways that our liver can get put on alert, but just one of the ways is if our gut is imbalanced, and I call that dysbiosis. We talk a lot about dysbiosis in my gut health course called Trust Your Gut. We walk you through all the ways to improve your gut, including ways to detoxify your, or to improve detoxification in your liver to kind of clear out the toxins, to clear out the bad bacteria, to balance out the bad bacteria. We walk you through all that in modules that you can watch at your own pace, providing resources, providing a support, a private support network, and providing weekly coaching calls with myself and my health coach, Jess. So if you're interested, please go to the link down below to work with us, and that is how you can learn more about the program. So let's get back to the gut and liver connection. So dysbiosis I talked about. So when you have dysbiosis, that's an imbalance in your gut bacteria, and that can lead to liver inflammation. When you have more liver inflammation, then you can have fat in your liver called fatty liver. So there's alcoholic fatty liver and there's non-alcoholic fatty liver. And obviously the alcoholic comes from heavy use of alcohol, which is, can be a toxin and is a toxin in, to our liver. It's okay in moderation for some people, but if you have a liver problem, you want to avoid alcohol. And then there's another term for the fatty liver that is not quite NASH. So it, it can be part of the metabolic syndrome where you have elevated liver enzymes, elevated triglycerides, elevated blood sugar that can all coexist together and create a fatty liver as well. So we don't want a fatty liver, obviously. The more fat that's in there, the less it can do its job. So when we have imbalanced gut bacteria, that can be one of the causes of fatty liver. So we want to improve that while we work on all the other things to help our liver. Recent studies show that probiotics and symbiotics, which are symbiotics are the combination of prebiotics, which are the food for the good gut bacteria, um, undigestible fibers that do help our good gut bacteria thrive, 
So if we, in, in products, we can combine the prebiotics plus the probiotics, and that's called a symbiotic. So these recent studies showed that either the use of one or the other did improve fatty liver and did improve the liver enzymes. So that's one way that we see that connection. There's another way that proves that strong connection is with fecal transplants. Now, some people are doing that for C. diff. So that's a really bad bacterial infection. We have pretty bad diarrhea and cramping and you can be hospitalized even. So some people that have had recurrent episodes of that will get a transplant where they actually take the microbiome in the form of, of poop and they um, put it into the, another microbiome. They started doing this with rat studies and then now they're doing it with humans. And so they've done it in some studies with um, those who suffer from cirrhosis of the liver, which is the end stage part of liver um, failure. And they have found that that improves their brain function. So there's less of the cognitive effect or cognitive disruption. So, you know, you can have really poor brain function when you have cirrhosis because you can tell the liver and the brain are connected as well. So they've done those, those transplants and found improvement in cognitive function. So you see there's that connection between a more balanced microbiome and better liver function. So those are just some examples. Now, what can you do to check out your liver? So you may have already done this, and that's why you're looking at this video, but if you're curious and you haven't, you can do what's called a hepatic function panel with your doctor or a complete metabolic panel. The hepatic function panel just has a couple other um, liver and bilirubin markers in there, whereas the complete metabolic panel um, also has your kidney function, blood sugar, and electrolytes in there. So you can do either one of those to look at the liver. If they're abnormal, you want to look at, well, did I fast? You know, because some certain foods right before it can make it a bit abnormal. And you also want to look at, did I do some heavy exercise the day before? Am, am I doing abnormal exercise at this moment when I'm checking, not at the actual moment, but when you're checking your liver? Um, is, there, is the exercise out of the ordinary? Because that can make your liver um, enzymes go up temporarily. So if they're up, check them again, maybe two to four weeks in a more controlled way, fasting without increased exercise, if those were part of it. And if they're still up, you probably want to get some hepatitis screenings for A, B, and C hepatitis, and then also look at a right upper quadrant ultrasound with your doctor. And they may find fatty liver. And that's okay. You can turn that around. That's not permanent, as long as it's not too advanced. So some ways you can improve your liver enzymes, and I'm going to have a PDF down below, so be sure to check that out. Some ways to improve your liver enzymes are detoxifying your environment. So taking toxins out of the air, if you can, if you feel like you have, you have a lot of toxins in your, your air and the environment that you're in. So the less toxins the liver has to process and the body has to work through the better so um you can have you can use air filters i like germ guardian or molecules expensive but that's a really good air filter and then they have whole house filters too water filters so even just a simple brita or a whole house water filter if you could afford it or um, i like zero water or berkey's are great and you can eat organic so at least 80 percent of the time if you can afford it try eating organic you can check out, and I'll put in the description down below, the Clean 15 um, from the Environmental Working Group and their Dirty Dozen. And those are ways to like kind of focus your budget on the most important organic fruits and vegetables. So that's one way. Non, uh, not a, um, hormone to get, not having the hormones in your animal products as well that you eat. And milk thistle tea can be very helpful. And then you can also add a probiotic and prebiotic blend called a symbiotic, like I said. And I'm going to have some affiliate links down below just to give you ideas of what I've used with my patients. You're free to choose whichever one works for you. And you always, whenever you want to make lifestyle changes or supplement additions to your life, you want to check with your doctor because I can't act as your doctor over social media but I can give you some ideas of what has worked for my patients, but you're an individual that needs to work with your healthcare provider to figure out what's best for you. But, you know, filtering your air also with plants. I have some ideas in, in the, the PDF down below of plants that can actually help filter your water. And you, with I also have videos on choosing how to choose a good probiotic. And so the ideas down below in the description will be ones that I have pre-screened that I've used with my patients and help them um, to heal their gut and even improve their liver function as well. 
So those are just some ideas on if things do end up abnormal in your liver enzymes, what the connection can be with your gut and how you can improve that. So check out the PDF down below if you want to work with my team and I and be a part of our coaching and our gut health program, then please or go to the link down below and check that out and book a call so you can learn more about the program. And then also you can join our private network, which is not, we have a different private network in the same, under the same kind of umbrella f- um, for Trust Your Gut, but there's a main free private network called Dr. Shelley Meyer Mighty Network. And so there's a link down below to join us there. And we have all kinds of gut health and hormone health and functional medicine tips. It's like a private Facebook group basically, but without the Facebook part of it where you have the ads or, you know, leading you in a certain direction. So it's just kind of just the information. So join us in any of those venues. We'd love to see you there. I have a free webinar that you can check out as well. And thanks so much for joining me. We'll see you next week.